Hi everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie Sound video. In this video series we're looking at sound design in Alien Isolation and how we can create a similar sound and aesthetic in Unreal Engine 4. This is part 2 of the series and in this one we're going to create our own sound effect using Audacity. We're going to start by creating an ambient sound. I'm going to walk you through how I would create a, a loopable ambient sound to simulate the engine noise of the station or the ship that we're going to base our little scene on. At the end of the video, I'm going to add a few links to some other sounds you can find on freesound.org. You can take those away and make your own environmental sounds as well. What we're looking for really is to have two, three, maybe four different areas within our little scene where we can move through as a player and we can look about how we transition from one sound to the next as we move through different spaces in that scene. Those ambient sounds are going to act as bass layers and we're going to be able to pin every other sound on top of those. Ridley Scott's Alien frequently blurred the line between the biological and the mechanical, the fusion that permeates the film's visual and sound design across the board. As the Nostromo hisses, groans, wheezes and thumps, it feels alive with the spectre of the ship's AI, Mother, always hovering in the background. The same is true of Sevastopol. The station thumps, it whirs, breathes, it clicks, sighs, and every single location has its own soundscape, its own oral identity that changes from one part of the station to the next. It's changing smoothly as you move through it. What we want really is to try to keep the aesthetic that we're after in mind. So when you're starting off with a sound, you want to think about a rough, you want to have a rough idea as to where you're going to get to, but you might not necessarily know all of the steps that you're going to have to take to get there. So that's the purpose and part of this video, to show you how we can get through to a sound that's going to match, be very similar to a sound that you might find in the Alien universe. We're not going to heavily produce our sounds, that means we're not going to aim to put a lot of uh, changes to each of the sounds, we're going to keep them pretty close to their original recordings, so the emphasis here is on finding good recordings that are clear, that don't have much static or crackling, don't have any incidental noise that was accidentally recorded, and that are very usable in their raw state already. That's going to help us to retain a level of realism, and it'll hopefully help to create a sense of claustrophobia. This is our first sound, this fridge recording, and let's just have a listen to what that sounds like. So there we are. Once you've downloaded that sound, click and drag it into Audacity. And we want to produce our sounds in mono. You have to select everything in this to apply any effects. If you click here though, it selects the whole track. So now we we'll go tracks, mix, mix stereo down to mono. And there we are with our one track. And we're going to trim this down a bit because we don't want it to be two minutes long. Maybe it's just 20 or 30 seconds is enough for us. Now I'm not being particularly neat here. So I'm not going to be zooming in and finding out, okay, so where is it that the wave is actually closest to the zero line and then cutting there. And I'll show you why that is as we get further on. Click here or select control A to select all of the WAV, and then we're going to apply a low pass filter effect, and then low pass filter. That's going to reduce the volume of sounds above the frequency that we set in this top box. So I'm going to set this to 500. So before, this is what we had, and after, control Y, this is what we have. So already it's a lot more muted and it sounds like it's going to be better as a bass sound. So there are still some high frequencies that we're getting. So let's apply a graphic equalizer, the graphic EQ. You can see here I've already got a preset pattern there. This allows us to change the volume at certain frequencies throughout the sound. So if I go to load up one of the ones I've already saved here. You don't have to use these in particular way that I've done them. I just found this was a good setup for this particular sound. So what I've got here is I haven't really touched these ones. These are all at note up to 200 hertz. And then we start to have a little dip. And then all of these are at about 11 hertz, minus 11 hertz. And then here another dip. And then everything from 2000 hertz up is at minus 20 decibels. Now it doesn't completely 
dampen it. You will still be able to hear some sounds at that level, but it does reduce it significantly. So let's apply this. And you can see that the wave is changing a little bit as we do these effects. Let's see this one again. So that's a lot lower and it's starting to sound a little bit more like a, a spaceship engine sound, really, rather than a fridge. But I can still hear some high frequencies, so I'm going to reapply the graphic EQ. Try that again. And yeah, that's much, much better. So next we are going to apply the slide stretch. Or sliding stretch. That's going to lower the pitch of the wave. And we can use this as well to stretch or shrink the length of the sound clip. So I've changed the pitch shift to minus 10, which is going to take us down by 10 semitones. That's going to reduce, uh, if you imagine a piano, if the if this sound wave was in middle C, in the very middle of the piano, this is moving us more towards the left, where all the bass notes of the piano are. And for the tempo change, I'm going to change this down to minus 75. So tempo is the speed of play. And if we're reducing this, we're going to lengthen or stretch out the original track. So what this does is that wow, wow, wow sound that we have for the fridge is going to be elongated. So that waveform is going to be much more stretched. It's going to be wow, wow, more than wow, wow, wow. So we should get a better sound this way. That's going to be more suggestive of a, of a much larger machine. Yeah, that's it. So now we have a sound that's much closer to the effect that we're wanting. So you'll notice as well, I'm listening to the sound as I go through. It's very important to listen to the sound ideally in full as you're creating it. Ideally at every step you should be doing that. You wanna know is the pitch changing overall? Because when we stretch things, sometimes the pitch can change in unexpected ways. If it is, we're gonna to have to go back and trim things a bit. Are there any clicks or pops? Are there any unwanted sounds that perhaps we didn't notice when we first sourced this sound? Is there a telephone go off in the background? Is there an unexpected voice? If there's too much to change, we're only looking at 15, 20, 30 seconds for these little sound, um, for these little sound assets at the moment. If there's too much to change, then maybe we need to change the part of the sound that we're using, try and find a different sound within that original sound. And sometimes we need to change the original sound completely for something else. With practice, you'll get faster at recognizing what a good source recording sounds like and what can stay, what needs to go. But just remember that you won't get everything right the first time for every single sound. Making mistakes is how we learn these things and we're not after the perfect sound anyway. What we want is something that's going to contribute to the whole. It's going to give the player a sense of space and it's going to root them in the scene. So now I've got quite a long track here. So I'm going to select the end half like this and I'm going to press Control and I on the keyboard. That splits up these two tracks. You can see a line there that comes there. And then Control and X to cut that. And then I'm going to go and add a new mono track. Paste that in there. And now we're going to reorder these. So I'm going to go to this double headed arrow tool here, the time shift tool, or you can press F5. I'm going to press that. I'm going to drag this along. This I'm going to drag until we get a little line then, it'll just snap to that. Even though we don't have any snapping on, it will snap to that. And then here, we want an overlap on this part here. Now, with the selection tool selected, or pressing F1, we're going to go back, we'll get that yellow line again. We're going to drag over both of the tracks until we have both yellow lines highlighted there. Let go, and there we've selected this bit. Now we're going to apply a crossfade. So we're going to go to Effect, and then crossfade tracks. And we want a, I found good results with constant power too. Constant power is better because it maintains the overall volume across the two tracks. Constant gain doesn't. So we're gonna use constant power. Don't worry about this. If there are any values in custom curve, it's not gonna apply it unless we have the custom curve option selected here. So we've got custom power two. Okay, that. And now if we listen from here. Okay, so we do have a pitch shift. 
So now I'm going to need to listen back through and find when does that pitch shift start to happen. Okay, so I think it's actually happening around this point and here as well. So I'm going to undo all of this. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to remove the start, I think. So I think from here, it's higher there. But there, around 20, what's it? 28? 28 and 16 are about the same. So let's delete from there. Oops. Let's delete from here. And then from here. Much shorter sound now, but let's listen. Okay, so there's not really any change in pitch there. There is a little change in volume, but if we cross fade, that's not going to be noticeable. So we're going to do the same thing. Control and I. And cut this one. Tracks, add new mono. Control V, F5, or click this little double headed arrow. Move that one along, move this one to the start. Cross that over, F1, or that selection tool. Select these parts that are overlapping. Effect, crossfade tracks, constant power two. Okay, and let's listen. It's fine. Let's press the shift key, and let's just listen to it loop through a couple of times. Okay, and there's our perfect loop. If you're finding it difficult to get a perfect looping sound, then just drop your message and I'll see if I can give you a hand to figure it out. A little bit of background on this method for looping though. Um, I used to spend ages trying to find the best point to loop at the start and the end of the audio by zooming in right down to like the individual wave bits and seeing, okay, so where's it closest to zero? And when you're trying to loop a stereo track, it's really difficult because you need to make sure that it's zero on both the left and right speakers, otherwise you're gonna get a click or a pop sound. So I do time, I do trimming, I'd stretch and fade, and I might still have a crackle or a pop. I do this overlap thing and I'd apply my own crossfade, but sometimes you get differences between the volumes and the pitches and it just it was awkward. Then I realized that if I visualize the sound as like a, a cylinder, if you imagine the sound is like a toilet roll with the sound wave like drawing onto the toilet roll and we cut that toilet roll straight down on one of its lines, then all we need to do is curve in the toilet roll a little bit further until there's an overlap across those lines, and then we have the perfect loop. You would never know. So I realized that it doesn't matter where we trim, where we split the track, so long as we're not splitting it really close to the beginning and really close to the end, so allowing ourselves enough time to be able to add a crossfade, we'll get the perfect cut. Because the levels at the end here, on this track one, the volume and levels and pitch for everything, whether it's a mono track or a stereo track, are going to be the same when it comes back in at the start of the second track. So we don't need to worry about getting the precise and perfect point at which to set our loop. We just split it up. And now we're ready to export the sound, but before we do, we just need to be sure that our project rate is set to the right type. So we want this here to be 44,100 which is 44.1 kilohertz, which is the format that UE4 requires. And then we can go to Format, Export, Export as WAV. And you can see I've already arranged some folders here. It's always useful, very useful, to have a structure to your sounds. So I've got the engine hums here. So these are my base layers. You can see I've got the fridge one here already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this one, I'm going to rename this, I'm going to name this one number six, and I'm going to place that ID with this. Now that's pretty new for me, pretty new convention, but it allows me to link the sound that I've created back to the original recording if I ever need to make changes and know where I need to go. So now I'll save that. Oh, and you'll see as well it's automatically saving it as a 16-bit file, which is again the format requirement of UE4. So we save that. It's going to tell you that you're about to mix down 
all the tracks you've got layered as one track. That's fine. We want it as one track, so we OK that. And here you get options to be able to update. So I might want to put in Valkyrie sound. And OK that. So now I'm ready to drag the file into UE4. And you can see I've already laid out my folders here. You can do that easily just by dragging in the folders. So if I highlighted these folders, drag them into UE4, it drags over the folders plus all the files that are located in them, which is really useful. So engine hums, and this is the one I've just created. So I'm just going to drag that into my engine home folder. There we are. There it is in the game. And then we're going to right click on that, create queue. Open that up. And with the wave player selected, we want to tick looping. And let's just hear it out. So if I get a still from even isolation and I mute it, does the sound work? Yeah, I think that sound would be good as a bass layer. Need some reverb. We might want to make one or two changes in Unreal. But yeah, I think that would work as a bass layer on which to hang the other sounds. So that's how we prepare a looping ambient sound for our scene, or any scene. Now, as I said earlier, we want a few of these, so I'm going to put some links under the video. At the moment, I have just over 30 individual files that I'll make available in a link at the bottom of the video as well. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how we can create some smaller sounds to sit over the top of our engine ambient and start building up the scene. I hope that's been useful. Let me know what you are able to get up with, what you're able to make in the comments below. Take care and thanks for watching.